Welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, as always, Tommy Brzee. It is Wednesday, September 4th around here, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to start with a lot of predictions today for Week 2. We're going to get into kind of the early slate early on. We'll get into Texas at Michigan to start things off. A very uh, straight-up matchup, it seems, right now, but that makes me very nervous to pick it. Then we'll get into the uh, battle for the Cyhawk Trophy, Iowa State, Iowa want to give that one some love if always a really really fun game and I'll give my pick for that one then we'll do three picks all in one segment we'll get you to Arkansas Oklahoma State Kansas State Tulane Georgia Tech against Syracuse a ton of big time gains and I just want to kind of pile all those in all in the noon slot in uh, on Saturday then we'll get into where are the double digit uh, upsets this week in week one it was 58 and two double digit favorites getting the win but there could be some this upcoming weekend. A little bit harder to find, but there are a couple that I want to highlight for you. And then we just have some questions coming out of week one. A ton of questions around Florida and Clemson and Florida State and a number of different things that I want to get over for you guys before we fully head on into week two. But before we jump in, I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show, and the best way for you all to get your question on the screen, we can have fun back and forth here, is to use the tip and donation link at the bottom of the screen or to use that super chat that you have. You can see that little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat on the, on the Sports Network channel. Utilize that if you'd like to. You can uh, just click on it, add any question or comment you'd like, and your name and question will pop up on the screen. Always a great way to make this a little bit more interactive, so absolutely love that and you can always use the gsmcpodcast.net link if that's a little bit easier for you but definitely want this to be interactive so utilize that if you have any question or comment let's jump in because texas at michigan is one of those games it's one of those games that everyone is looking forward to this saturday and the jersey matchup is going to be incredible two iconic programs going at it in ann arbor this weekend and it's going to be a tough one to pick. I can promise you that. This is one that when you look at it at face value, when you watch what happened last week with both these teams, everyone wants to go Texas. And I've seen a number of people go Texas in the past couple of days. It makes me very nervous about this one. Everyone in week one has so many different things to say, and they have so many different opinions and so many that are definitely overreactions in one way or another. So you watch that Michigan game on Saturday, and you see Will Johnson have to have a 90-yard pick six to make things look a little bit better for Michigan. And you're thinking, this offense can't get it going. They don't have the guys that they had a year ago, especially at quarterback in. Texas is going to be able to come in here and absolutely roll, especially what they did to Colorado State just absolutely absolutely dismantling them from start to finish but this is where you get got this is where a lot of people get got in college football where you think you know what one team is you think you know what another team is and then they walk onto the field they strap them up and they play against each other and it looks a lot different than what you're expecting so this is one that I'm very very nervous about uh, at least to pick because you never really know which way this one's going to go and you have two teams that are going to attack very different uh, ways obviously Michigan's going to be a little bit more run heavy try to slow down this clock Texas is going to take their moments now they are a little bit more of a short passing team so not quite as shot heavy as some of the other teams but at the end of the day they are going to be a pass heavy team they are going to try to stretch you out and see what happens on the other side so This is a scary matchup. There's no doubt about that. I think Texas knows that. I think they're going to come in ready, but this is one that they're going to have to be very, very careful about. But I do want to get in some players, some watch, then we'll get into some stats before we get into all the details of how each of these teams can win. And I want to start with DeAndre Moore, the wide receiver from Texas. He was maybe the only wide receiver on the roster that did not get a catch on Saturday, but this is a very, very talented kid. If you remember Jordan Whittington from a year ago, he's playing in that position, the slot position for Texas, and very, very talented route runner, really, really good hands, and one of those guys that is one of the best blockers on the team, so maybe that was a big-time reason he didn't get the ball too much on Saturday, but this is a very talented kid and one that can get loose at any moment, so he's one of those guys that maybe you're not you know circling him when you really go into this one you have Isaiah Bond you have John Tay Cook you have a million different guys to talk about but DeAndre Moore just might make a couple of plays that totally change this game 
And then David Benda. Uh, this was the most remarkable player for Texas in week one by a mile to me. When we watched uh, that game, that guy was flying out of a cannon every single time. He took really, really great routes for uh, run uh, run stuffing, absolutely snailed a couple of people and sent them backwards. He is huge for this game because every now and then they're going to break through that uh, defensive line. That's just a inevitability with this Michigan run game. And you're going to have to have that linebacker ready to meet him. So him and Andrew. Anthony Hill are going to be absolutely huge in this game. Max Bredesen is an interesting one because I don't think he's going to go for 25 carries, 150 yards, or anything crazy like that. But I do think he's a very capable player. I think he's a guy that could hit a block that gets Donovan Edwards loose on the edge. Or he could be just another good uh, set of hands for Davis Warren that are close to him that make it a little bit easier for him to get into this game. So I'm not saying Max Bredesen is going to be the story of this game, but he might just have a play that totally changes the complexion of it. And then on the back end, Zeke Barry is make, is playing nickelback for Michigan and a very, very talented player. He's going to have his hands full on Saturday. There's no doubt about that. Whether it's DeAndre Moore or one of the tight ends that he's guarding, he's going to have to make sure he's ready to roll because Texas is going to spread the ball out a ton. Will Johnson's going to be incredible, and he's going to hold down that spot on his side of the field. You need to make sure the rest of this back end is ready to go because Texas is not going to let you... Uh, zero in on one guy and let Will Johnson just dominate this game. I can promise you that. So it's going to be incredible to watch all of these players go to work. But I also want to get into some stats that you guys are going to want to watch because there are a number that are going to be really, really interesting. Texas is 4-1 and one against the spread in their last five games. has been really, really good. 7-0 uh, and oh straight up in their last seven road games. So includes that Alabama game a year ago where they played just so well and were able to walk out with a win. Uh, Michigan has won their last 20 straight home games. They're 28-0 in August and September since 2015. Just been on an absolute tear. And if you've been watching Michigan, that is no, no secret. But uh, this line was around three before this weekend. So it gives you an idea of how much people can kind of overreact to one week and see just how far things can go in one direction after one week of football. But is going to be a really tough one. I'm not going to lie to you. This is a very tough one to pick, but let's get into how Michigan can get this one done. First of all, you just got to establish the run early. You have to make sure Donovan Edwards, who only had 27 yards rushing a week ago, it was really only Khalil Mullings and then every now and then Alex Orgy making plays for them in the run game. You have to make sure that's not the same uh, on Saturday because the reality is Davis Warren is not going to go out there and win you this game. He's not going to go out there and make spectacular plays over and over and beat a team like Texas. What he can do is execute the offense, but he's not going to be able to do that if they can't get a run game going, if they can't push those linebackers back a little bit and allow him to get those passing windows that they very much need. So getting the ball to Donovan Edwards, making sure this offensive line that was not necessarily all that good uh, last week and definitely makes some Michigan fans a little bit nervous for this week Get them moving forward. Get them comfortable in that run-blocking scenario, and then maybe you can take advantage of this Texas interior defensive line that did really well on Saturday, but this is a totally different beast that you're facing uh, here. So going to be really interesting. I think when you look at Texas, the interior defensive line is where you can attack, and I expect Michigan to do just that. On the other side of the offense, you got to get Davis Warren comfortable. There's no two ways about that. You have to make sure that Davis Warren is getting the ball out quickly, getting it to Tyler Morris, Kendrick Bell, Colston Loveland over the middle of the field, making sure that they have every ability to get the ball to the receivers, most uh, importantly, because only five players caught a pass, and the leading wide receiver in uh, on Saturday had 15 yards. That cannot be the case on Saturday if they have any chance to win this game. I understand Colston Loveland is a downright special player, and we'll talk about him in a second, but at the end of the day, they need wide receivers to step up because if they can't, Texas is going to be able to stack the box and just absolutely suffocate the run game. So going to be really, really tough, but at the end of the day, getting Davis Warren comfortable will give you at least a shot to keep, uh, keep this Texas defense on its heels and a little bit off balance. And then... Keep Texas one-dimensional. If you can keep Texas as a passing team and not a rushing team, you are in really good shape because I don't care how good Texas is. I don't care how many receivers they have on the outside. When you can drop seven or eight in coverage and feel good about what you can do against the run, you have a lot of different chances to win games, especially against a team that has so many speedsters out there that thrive on the amount of space. Shutting down that space as much, as much as you can is what you want to do. So Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant need to make sure, Jayshon Barham as well, need to make sure that they are huge against the run on Saturday because 
if they can, then that RPO game that Texas absolutely loves in could cause real big issues for Michigan on Saturday, or the play-action game that is just downright beautiful from start to finish. All of those things would be kind of negated. Obviously, Texas would have some success from time to time, but if you can't run the ball, you're not going to be scared about play action, or you're not going to be scared about uh, Quinn Ewers handing that ball off on that RPO. So you take an entire part of Texas offense just out of the equation, then you have a real shot to win this game, and then you have Quinn Ewers possibly forcing the ball into windows that are just a little bit too tight. But then, moving over to Texas... The biggest one to me is spread the ball out and let Quinn uh, Quinn Ewers cook. There are a couple of games in Quinn Ewers' career where he's had to play on big-time stages. It was incredible what he did at Alabama a year ago. It was the best game that I've ever seen him play. And then against Washington in the CFP, it was a little less clean from a completion percentage standpoint, but still played really good football, missed a couple of big-time moments. But at the end of the day... This guy has played in big-time games. He knows what it's like to walk into those uh, environments and try to get a win. So I don't think there's a part of Texas that's going to really flinch on on Saturday. Now, maybe there's a a different type of ideology around this team from last year, but when you have Quinn Ewers, when you have a lot of the offensive linemen they had from a year ago, when you have some defensive linemen that weren't the starters on that team but were absolutely on that team, You have that energy in your locker room, not only that you can go up and compete with this team, but you've done it. You've been able to walk in Alabama and get a double-digit win. Who's to say you can't do it up in Ann Arbor? So that's the confidence that Quinn Ewers has, and I think putting the ball in his hands is the best way for Texas to go about business pretty much all season, but especially in this game where you're going to have to be able to lean on the pass game just a little bit more. You still want that run game to get going, obviously, but Quinn Ewers is your biggest asset. Utilize him to the nth degree on Saturday because he's the most comfortable choice they have on that offense, at least when it comes to pass or run. Um, But then slow Colston Loveland. When you looked at what happened last week with Michigan, no one else played good football other than Colston Loveland when it comes to pass catchers. He is the best pass catcher on this team, and that is not the ideal scenario. I can promise you that. But to be fair, he might have been last year. So there, or Roman Wilson probably was last year. But at the end of the day, they need more from their wide receivers. When targeting Colston Loveland on Saturday, they were 8 for 9, 87 yards, and a touchdown. When, not, when targeting anyone else, they were 7 for 16, 31 yards, and 1 pick. So... It's an entirely different game. If Texas is in the, it has the ability to put Jalen Gilbo at the nickelback position or maybe pull over Jade Barron to play on Colston Loveland and then you bracket him over top with a safety, it's going to be really hard to Davis for Davis Warren to fit it into those areas. And especially if he doesn't love his wide receivers, he's going to try to fit into those areas. And then you get mistakes. So I think that's the big time thing is make Colston Loveland a relative non-factor. You're never going to be able to stop that kid. He's 6'7". He's a mil- He's incredible. He's downright awesome. But at the end of the day, being able to put him in precarious situations where he's bracketed by two guys and Davis Warren has to make a decision is going to be the way that Texas gets some turnovers on defense and totally changes this game. And then finally, run the ball creatively. Texas is not necessarily in a position where they feel super confident in their run game as of right now. Obviously, C.J. Baxter and Christian Clark going down have a big uh, part in that, but also they just don't necessarily have the depth they want to have to be able to run in between the tackles all day against a front like Michigan. So the way you do it is end arounds, jet sweeps, pitches, anything to get this speed out on the outside. And this offensive line, if you have watched them they do a really good job of run blocking when someone is pulling downfield. They don't do a good job of run blocking just straight up in zone because they can't get their feet behind them, they can't get their body moving, and that's when offensive linemen are really, really scary. So I do think this is part of just what Tex is going to need to do. You know, pull guys on the outside, get people out on the outside, and let your speed go to work. So it's going to be incredible to watch that, and I think if Texas can run the ball creatively, get on the outside, and let their speed just be what it is, they might just have a really good shot to get this one done. And then some matchups to watch just really quickly. The Michigan D-line against the Texas O-line might just decide this. If the Michigan O-line dominates the Texas o or if the Michigan D-line dominates the Texas O-line, then this Texas run game cannot get going. It might be a long day for the Longhorns. And then the Texas wide receivers against the Michigan secondary. And this is less about Will Johnson and what he can do because he's going to be incredible. I feel pretty confident in that. But 
you have to find everyone else. If you can find Jair Hill on a one-on-one matchup with Isaiah Bond, if you can find Zeke Berry in an uncomfortable matchup with DeAndre Moore, whatever it is, making sure that you find the matchups you want and spread the ball out to all of these wide receivers, you're going to have a lot of success. And then finally, the Texas front seven against this Michigan run game is huge. If the Texas D-line and those linebackers who played incredibly well against uh, Colorado State but have a totally different beast in front of them this weekend, if they can play well and stop this uh, Michigan run game, there's almost no world where Michigan can win this game. So Michigan has to win that matchup if they want a shot because if Texas stops them cold in the run game, they are in trouble. I can promise you that. But my pick for this game, I am going to take Texas. I'm going to fall into the trap. And I feel like on Monday I'm going to be talking about how I probably shouldn't have overreacted to week one. But Texas looks really, really good. And I think Michigan has so many questions on offense. I still I still don't think they really know who they want to be their quarterback. I think they prefer it to be Alex Orgy. But he's not executing at the level that they need him to. So it's a lot of different questions up there at Michigan. I do think Texas gets this, this one uh, done 27-13 to 13 and continues moving on. Gets that big time win win away from home like they did a year ago and then you figure out what happens with Texas going forward as for Michigan this is one that should not deter what they can do this upcoming season but they got a lot of things to figure out there's no doubt about that so I am taking Michigan or I am taking Texas I'm not taking Michigan I am falling into the trap of you know buying into a team that played really good on in week one and not buying into the team that didn't play really good but to be fair going into the season I tended to believe Texas was going to win this game in a kind of Alabama Texas fashion so I'll stick with that for the time being. This one went a little bit long, so we'll try to speed things up from here on out. But at the end of the day, let's take our first break here. And when we come back, we want to talk about the Cyhawk Trophy. We got to talk about Iowa State, Iowa, a really fun game every single year. And if I didn't cover it, I'd be doing you guys wrong. So I want to make sure I get to that right after this. So stick with us. <laughs> 